everybody. So today I wanted to tell you a little bit more about NaNoWriMo. And it's something that's going to be taking up a lot of my time in the month of November. And I'm going to do the best I can to keep the channel going. And I have a lot of videos that I've made in October that I'm scheduling out for November. So it should be really fun for you. If you haven't heard of NaNoWriMo, it's the National Novel Writing Month. And this is a challenge where you are supposed to write a 50,000 word novel in the month of November. And it's really a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, it's hard, but it's also really fun to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And they have it very well organized in, in groups uh, that are part of just your area. And so you get a lot of support and they have a lot of activities and different things that you can go to if you want. There's a really wonderful support on the NaNoWriMo website where different authors will write pep talks and give tips and things. And, and so it's just a really great experience. And the thing that I like the most about NaNoWriMo is that it just gets you writing every single day. And I thought it would be fun as kind of the introduction to NaNoWriMo for, for you guys. I thought today on Chris Vigilante Reads uh, YouTube page, she did a tag called the NaNoWriMo tag. And it, this tag was created by Christina Horner. And I thought it would be fun to do the NaNoWriMo tag myself so you guys get a little idea of my writing and what I'm going to be doing this year. So let's get started. So the first question in the NaNoWriMo tag is, how many times have you done NaNoWriMo? This is my fourth time, fourth time. I really debated about doing it this year because I've got two blogs plus this channel plus a job and I'm like, how the heck am I gonna do a novel in addition? But I don't know, I just figured what the heck, what do you gotta lose? I'm a really fast writer and that's one thing that helps me with NaNoWriMo is that I pump it out pretty quick. This year, it kind of came out of the blue for me. Like I just, it, in previous years, I'd been thinking about what I wanted to write about and had kind of a timeline and a plan and everything. But this year, I don't know, I just was like, oh my gosh, it's almost November and I haven't even come up with a good idea. And so I'll tell you what I came up with, but it's a little, I'm definitely pantsing it this year uh, and not as prepared as I normally am. So we'll see how it goes. The next question is, how did you first find out about NaNoWriMo? You know, I can't remember. It's just something I wanted to do. I had wanted to do for many, many, many years. And I had this story about when I first quit my job uh, in 2007, and it was just such an epic moment in my life. And I always thought that would make a great story. And I never got around to doing it. But finally one year, and it was the year that I uh, was having my house built and life was really, really crazy. But yet somehow I also did NaNoWriMo that year. And uh, it was a you know, great thing. Next question is, what was the name of the first novel you attempted with NaNo? And it was called Cubicle Refugee. My second novel is called Trading Christmas. It was about the single woman and her best friend who's a stay-at-home mom who has like four kids and they both kind of envy each other's life. They both think that they have it good. Well, one night they're sitting on Santa's laps, they make a wish and they end up switching places, kind of like Freaky Friday. It was a really fun book to write and it was narrated by Santa, which was fun. Okay, then my third book was called How to Be Alone and it was about a woman who uh, has never really had a relationship. She's just kind of been focused on her career and she ends up losing her job because of downsizing, not because she did anything wrong. And when she goes to a new job, she has to go back to school for her job. So all of a sudden she's surrounded by all these young people who can't believe that she's never been in love. And so it's sort of this interesting situation and she develops this friendship with this woman who ends up becoming pregnant uh, this young woman and they be, end up becoming friends. So then the next one is give us a summary of what you're writing this year. So again, I had a hard time coming up with something to write about, but I was watching American Greed, which is the show about Ponzi schemes and swin swindlers and things. And they had this episode about this man who was supposedly having this oil business, oil investment thing, uh, but it was all just a big Ponzi scheme. And he, he went on he went with his daughter on MTV Super Sweet 16 and threw this crazy party. And it just occurred to me that, that what it must be like to be that girl, to be in like this, basically this princess having this huge party on, you know, national television. And then your, your father going to prison and everybody hating him because he took all of their money and probably hating you because you were on this show 
uh, as the my super sweet 16. So that's the kind of, I'm gonna write about that character. The next one is, what's the best writing advice you've ever been given? The best writing advice I've ever been given, at least for NaNoWriMo, is just to keep writing. To don't edit, don't edit, don't edit, don't edit. Just keep writing. Since I'm not out here trying to like get published necessarily, it's just more for fun. Really thinking about the story and thinking about how it relates to my story is something that's really beneficial to me. And you know, I think even if I was trying to get published, I mean, just thinking about what is the story and how, think about the stories in my life did you ever take a year off NaNoWriMo? And no, this year I almost did, but I decided to go for it. What do you gotta, like I said, what do you gotta lose? If you don't, no big deal. Next is, what's your biggest inspiration when figuring out what to write? It's different every year as you can see. I focus on an older single woman because that's basically what I am. That's what I relate to. I always have messages of faith because that's also something I relate to. And, you know, then I kind of go from there. I'm not the kind of person that could write something that's total fantasy or in another world. I'm just not creative enough for that. Like, I'm more, and that's really not the kind of writing that I like to read. Like, I like to read stuff that I can relate to and that feels somewhat in my world a little bit more. And so for me, that's the, the kind of writing that I do as well. It has to be something that I can kind of relate to a little bit. This is read us the first sentence from your novel. And so I just decided a couple sentences from each of my novels that I've done would be sort of fun for you guys to see what my writing is. And it's just, I'm just an amateur, so be nice. <laughs> my first novel was called Cubicle Refugee, and this was the first few sentences. I've seen this ledge many times before. It is the one place in the iron bars of my office building where I can breathe deeply, contemplating my escape plan. Today the air is cold and wet, and I know it will make me sick, but I don't care. A sick day doesn't sound so bad. So that's the first couple sentences of that book. Uh, and then this is the Christmas one, Trading Christmas. This is, and remember, it's, this is narrated by Santa. So, Elves, you see, are worriers. Be something seemingly as small as a gear on a truck that isn't quite right, or a color of hair on a doll that seems slightly off, but it will capture their attention for weeks and weeks. You will literally see them pacing the halls of the Kringle Castle muttering to themselves, what to do, what to do. Then the last year's book, How to Be Alone, is, <laughs> this was, I thought, I thought this was pretty strong. She says, there are certain situations where smiling is the greatest of insults. Someone will look at you with their head hanging down and an expression that says, boy, this is awkward, but I'm trying to be nice, so I will smile. Jamie's boss was giving her that kind of look. <laughs> So that's the first couple sentences of my three books. Okay, then the next question, last question is, why do you love writing? And I love writing because I, I think it's about creating stories and life is about stories. And I think you, when you become a writer, even a, just amateur, even just as a blogger, you start to see the world in terms of stories. And, you know, am I telling the right story? And the story that this person that I'm having maybe conflict with, what is the story they're trying to tell? And so for me, it has great value in that way. And you work out certain things in your life, honestly. I know blogging certainly has, but also writing uh, fiction has as well. And so if you guys are, are any of you guys doing NaNoWriMo? I know some of you are. Please put in the comments section uh, anything that inspires you in your writing and any strategies that you have for NaNoWriMo that would help me. And, uh, and I will put my NaNoWriMo profile link down. So if you are a NaNoWriMo uh, subscriber, then go ahead and click on that and add me so we can support each other and it'll be really fun. And uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye.